Hello and welcome to another Naughty Egg Draw. I'm Jake, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use parallaxing in your guys' animations. Now, parallaxing in a basic term is essentially when your animation has a background that's moving, and the foreground, middle ground, and background are all moving at different speeds. Now, this effect makes for a much more realistic sense of motion when your character is driving, running, walking, or just really anything that involves the character moving at a faster pace. Alright, well, let's get into the animation process. So when you're setting up to do this, you'll need a minimum of two layers. I recommend three if you want this method to be a bit more effective. The reason you need at least two is because the idea of parallaxing is that objects closer to you appear to be moving faster, and objects further away from you appear to be moving a bit slower, and the further and further you go out, the slower they get. So if you have at least three or more layers, it can give you a stronger sense of motion. To start out, I always have at least close, middle, or far. or background, middle ground, and foreground. You can word them however you feel most comfortable when you're naming your layers though. Now right now all I'm doing is setting up the imagery for my layers and this is one of the moments where doing a copy and paste doesn't really hurt. But that's up to you. But if you're trying to be a one man animation studio, it can be hard at times and if you can cut some time out of things, this is the place to do it. Repeating backgrounds in fast moving animation where someone is either driving or running has been used for decades. You can watch something like Scooby-Doo and you'll see this method being used all the time. Now just remember when you're setting up your scene, you'll want to give yourself enough assets to actually move the stuff across the screen. The layer closest to you is going to need a bit more objects to spread across the screen since they'll be clearing the screen much faster. So when you're doing this effect, you're going to be using the method called Classic Tween. To do this, you will need to end the section where you want the effect to end by adding a new keyframe. Once you have done this, you will go to the new keyframe and move the objects to where you want the end position to be. Once you have done that, you can right click on the timeline and select Classic Tween. Then this will automatically fill in all the motion for you. Now I always start with the layer farther out and move inward. Now you can do it any way you want, but the reason I do it this way is because I find it easier to judge the closer layer's speed based on the outer layers. The farther layers will have a very short range of motion, and each layer you move closer, you're going to make that range of motion bigger and bigger. The reason you do this is because when you do a classic tween, it'll judge the speed based on how far it has to move, and in the time frame that you gave it to move. When I make these movements, I like to use the arrow tools to make the motion because if you use the mouse and even if you're holding shift, you may make it drop a little bit and make the motion turn out a little off. When you use the arrows, you have two ways of using them. You can hit the arrow by itself and it will move it in a very small way. And if you hit the arrow tool while holding shift, it'll make that motion a bit larger. Something you're going to want to do is play the timeline each time you do one of these classic tweens because you don't want to leave it to chance whether or not you got the proper motion down right on your first try. You may have to do it and undo it and do it again many times before you get the motion just right. So just a rule of thumb, just test it every single time. So I'm pretty happy with the effect at this point. So once you're here, you can just add any last bit of details that you may want to add to the animation. Like giving the car a bit of a shake and make it look as though it's driving on a road or maybe some more objects passing by the car. That's all up to you. If you stick around to the end though, you can check out the finished animation with sounds, as well as how I export the videos out of Animate CC and convert it into video files. Okay, so once you've finished your animation, you're going to hit Control plus Enter, and this will export an SWF file. And while you're in Animate CC, you can preview the video. Once you've created the SWF, you're going to open a third-party program named Swivel, and I'll leave a link down below for the download to that. 
Once you have it open, you can find the SWF file that it made and select it. Choose the settings you want for the export and hit convert, and it'll create a video file for you. Alright, well, let's check out how the animation turned out. So that's it everyone, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something from it. And thank you guys for watching until the end. If you haven't yet, make sure you smack that sub button, throw a like and a comment down below, and like always, keep drawing and until next time. Bye! Hi.